Oh boy, buckle up for this one. It's the year 2043, and guess what? The world is so full of people, it's like a never-ending queue at a Starbucks. Resources are as rare as a sincere apology from a politician. In a stroke of genius, humanity decides, hey, let's play with our food's DNA. This leads to crops growing faster than a teenager's mood swings. But wait, there's a catch. Suddenly the world is hit with a baby boom that makes rabbits look lazy. Enter Dr. Nicolette Kamen, a political activist and conservation biologist. She's like, one kid per family, folks. It's the new trend. And thus, the Child Allocation Bureau, CAB, is born. It's like the fashion police, but for babies. Everyone gets these fancy bracelets that are basically baby detectors. They're like, beep, got a sibling? Off to the police with you. If you thought it couldn't get more dramatic, here comes Karen Setman. She eats the modified crops, and bam, septuplets. Karen checks out, as in, she dies. And her dad, Terence, is like, seven grandkids? No problemo. He names them after the days of the week. Creative, right? He turns their home into a hide-and-seek champion's dream, and trains them to be Karen 2.0. Each gets a day out. Monday, on Monday. Tuesday, on Tuesday. You get the drift. These girls are sharing Karen's life like it's a Netflix account. They come home and play story time to update each other. Terence, being a tech whiz, hacks their bracelets to make each of them look like Karen on her day out. These bracelets also have GPS because privacy is so last century. Now Terence has built a hidey hole in case the baby police show up. But plot twist. One Saturday. Saturday is off being a ballerina, but Thursday pulls a sneaky and goes skateboarding. Classic Thursday, am I right? Saturday comes home, and Thursday's missing. Terence is freaking out more than a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Then, knock knock. It's Thursday, but oh no, she's missing an index finger. In a moment that makes you go, wait, what? Terence decides all the girls need matching missing fingers. Because, you know, it's not a family gathering without a little bit of over-the-top drama. Okay, so 30 years have zipped by, and our septuplet saga continues with more twists than a pretzel factory. Grandpa's kicked the bucket, and the sisters are all grown up with personalities as varied as flavors in a mega pack of jelly beans. Monday, our firstborn, is basically the poster child for perfection. She's so golden, you'd think she was dipped in honey. She's totally into the whole, I'm Karen Setman gig. Then there's Tuesday, our paranoid pothead. Imagine a cat on a hot tin roof, but with more weed and less grace. Wednesday? She's the sporty spice of the group, ready to throw a punch at the drop of a hat. Enter Thursday, the family rebel. She's got more attitude than a teenager at a family reunion. She's craving her own spotlight so bad, she'd probably fight a mirror for it. Friday is our resident nerd, the tech wizard. She's the backbone of the operation, ensuring their secret lives don't crash like a poorly coded website. Now, Saturday. She's the life of the party, the wild child. She's never worked a day in her life. And why would she? She's too busy being the social butterfly. Sunday is the goody two-shoes, the caregiver. She probably knits sweaters for kittens in her spare time and bakes cookies for orphans. These sisters are like a chameleon on a rainbow, constantly changing their looks with wigs and makeup. One fine Monday, our girl Monday is freaking out more than a long-tail cat on caffeine pills in a room full of vacuum cleaners. She's got to nail a presentation for a promotion. Imagine the pressure. So, she dolls up and heads out, only to bump into Adrian, a CAB agent at a checkpoint. He's all up in her grill, checking her ID. Talk about a mood killer. At work, she meets Jerry in the elevator, who's also gunning for the promotion. He's like, I know your secret, and basically tries to blackmail her. Classic office politics. That night, the sister squad is on pins and needles because Monday is MIA. They're tracking her bracelet, but it's giving them the silent treatment. Panic mode. Activated. Tuesday not wanting to break tradition, heads out to work the next day, only to find out Monday got the promotion and was last seen yucking it up with Jerry at a bar. But wait, there's more. Tuesday gets nabbed by the CAB agents and thrown into a cell, where she meets the big boss, Nicolette Cayman. Cayman's like, I know about your sister act, and it's not the Broadway kind. Suddenly Agent Joe jumps in with a knife because why not? Back at the apartment, the remaining sisters are freaking out like they're in a horror movie. CAB agents bust in using Karen's eye, yep, you heard that right, to get past the retinal scanner. A fight breaks out, and it's like a scene from a low-budget action movie. 
Tragically, Sunday gets shot. The sisters are devastated, mourning like they've lost the last slice of pizza. Friday, playing detective, finds out the eye is actually Tuesdays. They suspect Jerry ratted them out. Next day, Wednesday, in a bold move, ditches the disguise and confronts Jerry. Because you know why not stir the pot some more. But Jerry is as clueless as a goldfish in a blender. Jerry's big reveal? Karen, in this case Monday, bought her promotion by sending a truckload of euros to Nicolette Cayman. Talk about buying success. But Jerry's moment in the spotlight is cut short when a CAB sniper decides it's lights out for him. Wednesday, in a panic that's like a cat on a hot tin roof, makes a run for it but gets cornered by Agent Joe, who clearly missed the memo on friendly neighborhood policing. Back at the Bat Cave, I mean, the twins' apartment, there's a knock. Plot twist. It's Adrian, the charming CAB agent. He's got the hots for Saturday, who's as oblivious as a bat in daylight. Little does she know, Adrian's been romancing one of her sisters. Talk about a complicated love life. Thursday, ever the strategist, tells Saturday to play along with Adrian because hey, he might spill some beans on Monday's whereabouts. Friday, the tech whiz, chimes in with a plan to hack into the CAB server using Adrian's bracelet. Saturday, probably wishing for a simpler life, agrees. Cut to Adrian's apartment where Saturday plays detective. Surprise, surprise, Monday was Adrian's mystery date. Saturday, in a spy move that would make James Bond proud, sinks her bracelet with Adrian's, giving Friday the keys to the kingdom of CAB's servers. They find what they think is Monday in a holding cell. But wait, there's more! CAB agents, in a move as subtle as a sledgehammer, raid the apartment and take out Saturday right before her sister's eyes. In a heroic, albeit explosive act, Friday blows up the apartment to give Thursday a fighting chance to rescue Monday. Now, we're down to the final two, Thursday and the presumably captured Monday. Adrian, hearing about the explosion, rushes to the scene like a knight in shining armor, only to find Thursday ready to give him a piece of her mind. Plot twist number 10456. Adrian is clueless about the whole seven twin fiasco and is head over heels for Monday. Romeo and Juliet got nothing on this. Adrian and Thursday team up, sneaking into CAB headquarters in a scene straight out of a spy movie. Thursday records some shady business involving cryosleep, which is more like a one-way ticket to the incinerator. Just when it's her turn to be frozen, she turns the tables and escapes with Adrian's help. They find the cell they think holds Monday, but nope, it's Tuesday, sporting a new pirate look with one eye gone. Because, why not add more confusion to the mix? Adrian and Tuesday now moonlighting as the world's most unlikely hacking duo, decide to crash Cayman's fancy fundraising shindig. They're like cyber Robin Hoods, ready to expose the dark truth about cryosleep. Meanwhile, Thursday's playing hide-and-seek with Monday, and guess where she finds her? In the restroom, of all places. Because where else would you have a dramatic family reunion? Turns out, Monday's been playing the Game of Thrones with her sisters. She wants to be the Queen Bee, the only Karen in town. She's been feeding Cayman info and cash like a slot machine that pays out secrets. Thursday and Monday have a sisterly spat in the restroom that ends with Thursday accidentally shooting Monday. Oops. Thursday, in a move that would make a spy proud, disguises herself as Monday and waltzes into the fundraiser. Cayman, meanwhile, is as clueless as a lost puppy. Back to our hacker heroes. Tuesday and Adrian hit the big red button and broadcast the incineration video to the entire party. Imagine the guests' faces, expecting a boring fundraiser video and getting a horror show instead. Cayman finally puts two and two together and realizes Thursday's in disguise. She goes full Undertaker on her. But wait, there's more. Injured Monday, probably feeling left out, drags herself out of the toilet, gun in hand. It's like a scene from a B-grade action movie. Joe, always eager to join the party, shoots Monday, thinking she's going after Cayman. Adrian, not to be outdone, takes out Joe. It's like a game of whack-a-mole, but with bullets. As the crowd flees, because who wouldn't? Monday spills the beans. She betrayed her sisters because she's pregnant with Adrian's kids. Plot twist. It's twins. Because in this story, one is never enough. Monday's grand plan? Strike a deal with Cayman to save her future mini Karens. But like all tragic heroes, she dies from her wounds. In the story's climax, the one-child policy gets tossed out the window, and Cayman's on the fast track to the death penalty. In the final scene, Thursday, Adrian and Tuesday are the last man and woman standing, while Monday's twins are chilling in an artificial womb. The camera pulls back to reveal a ward full of crying babies. 
Because why end on a simple note when you can have a nursery that resembles a baby factory?